Hi everybody, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with the books that I managed to finish in August. So in total, I ended up reading eight books this month. Seven of them I would consider horror and there was one that was definitely more like thriller, crime fiction. Maybe there was like two that were more crime fiction, but I don't know. I just like to be picky about it for no reason. In total, I read 2,805 pages, which is about 93 and a half pages per day. I had a page goal for the beginning of this year instead of a book goal, and I wanted to read 35,000 pages by the end of the year. Uh, so at the beginning of the month, that goal is down to 3,349. So if you, you know, subtract what I read this month, I only need to read 544 more pages to make it to the goal. I'm fairly proud of myself. Another goal that I had at the beginning of the year was to read books that I bought previous to this year. It's easy for me to get wrapped up in new releases and books that I've just bought recently, so I'm trying to make sure that I also read kind of my back catalog of books. Uh, so this month I did end up reading only four off of my TBR, but that is, I guess, 50% of what I read, which is, you know, a, a decent, um, <laughs> a decent amount, I suppose. There were a lot of really exciting new releases that came out in the last two months, so I had a lot to read. I also like to keep track of the years the books I read were published. This month, I read a lot of more recent books. So the oldest one that I read was published in 2002. Then we go to 2008, 2018, and then one book from last year, 2020. And then the rest of the books I read, four of them were from 2021. And I had a pretty good reading month. My average star rating was four. Um, so, like that's good but that's not to say that every book i read i loved but we'll get into that seven of the books that i read were adult one i would say could be either young adult or adult like i said i just like to be picky about it there's just no reason it was a good book and i mean i'm an adult so you know it could be a book that catered to a younger audience though i also like to keep track of the formats the formats of the books I've read, and this month, all of them were considered full novels. Six of the books I picked up were physical books. Um, one was strictly audio. The other one, uh, most of it, I listened to on audio and I ended up um, reading it in the car because I was so excited. I just like could not um, like wait for, wait to be able to listen to it on audio. So, um, yeah, we'll get into that. I had a five-star prediction this month that was for The Loop by Jeremy Robert Johnson, and it did end up being a five-star read for me. I'm very excited about that. Um, I also had a book for the Buzz Wordathon, but I didn't. I just didn't get to it. I thought I wasn't stacking too much on my plate at the beginning of the month, but it turned out I was, especially considering that you know, two of these I listened to instead of um, physically reading them. So I don't know. It is what it is. I'm trying to not pressure myself so much. I get, sometimes I do that just because I'm so excited to read so many things at once that I'm like, I'll read this, I'll read this, I'll read this. And then and then I don't. Getting into the books that I read this month, uh, the first one on my stack here is The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren. This was a book that I picked up. Um, I was hoping it would have great like summer hot weather feels uh, and, and it did. This is about two sisters, Anna and Rachel, and they are on a vacation in Thailand they're with Rachel's boyfriend and Anna's kind of the third wheel. So there's kind of an interesting dynamic between, um, you know, the sisters and the one sister's boyfriend. And they go to this strange festival on a beach and they 
drink a lot and someone may have slipped something into Anna and Rachel's drinks and the next thing that they know they wake up on this boat and they're in the middle of the ocean kind of and they end up making it to this island and this island is void of any human population in fact humans had tried to develop it and things went terribly wrong and everyone who's been to that island since has just disappeared so like things are not looking good for Anna and Rachel uh, so they don't really know this though they don't know that and they go to this island and things go terribly wrong there are these really interesting creatures and I don't want to give more than that away. I think you can kind of tell, uh, you know, from the cover of the book that this is a creature feature. Um, and I really liked the way that the author created these things. So they weren't quite exactly what I was expecting. The humor in this was great. Uh, the characters were very funny and I think the author did a really great job of balancing kind of the humor and the comedy and the gore and the murdering and the killing and the gore you know there was a lot of gore i and that's something i appreciate i thought it was done well and it was interesting uh i it was easy to visualize what was going on with this book too um which i appreciate i do feel lost sort of when i can't visualize the things that are going on in a book i know not everyone's you know a very visual i don't know does that make sense a visual reader not somebody who visualizes what they're reading but I definitely am uh, this did feel a little bit slow at points where it was like okay you know can we pick up the pace here but I still really enjoyed reading this and I'm very much looking forward to picking up more of David Sodergren's stuff all right next on my pile here is come with me by Ronald Malfi I'm just going to go over this briefly. I did a more in-depth review that I'll leave in like a click your link thing um, up at the top. So this is a book about a man, oh, sometimes I get fuzzy with the names, Aaron, and his wife has recently died. And she was an investigative journalist and he finds out sooner after her death, he finds this receipt for a motel and he's like, this is strange. Um, I was not with her. I didn't know that she went and did this. So what's going on? And very slowly this mystery unfolds and Aaron finds that his wife had the secret obsession that he didn't know about. And it slowly also becomes his obsession. This is a really great atmospheric, like dreary, maybe supernatural book. This really reminded me when I was reading it of the Outsider by Stephen King or also the first season of True Detective where it's like things are really strange and I'm not sure if this is something that is not supernatural you know what I mean so I would highly recommend this I really loved this book next I read well more like I listened to Dexter by Design by Jeff Lindsay I believe this is the fourth book in the Dexter series and I really like the audiobooks for these because the author reads them himself and I think that his voice for Dexter really comes out much better when he's reading it as opposed to when I'm reading it. Um, you know, this is his character that he created so that kind of makes sense. And you know, this is a typical Dexter book. There is a murderer and Dexter, you know, needs to find out who it is while also navigating his um, own issues as somebody who has murderous tendencies and is trying to masquerade as a normal person. So it's fun. These are kind of, um, you know, like junk food books to me. They don't really challenge me. They're not exactly hard. I don't know. They don't make me think a lot. You know what I mean? I'm not like, who could this murderer be? You know, it's just, it's fun to, it's enjoyable, it's entertaining. I love to listen to them, you know, when I cook. And that's it. All right, this is Haunted by Dora L. Williams. And I'm not gonna go into this a bunch either because I'm planning on doing a 
trope video with books like this in October. This is a true haunting story. And <laughs> I read one last month as well. And I'm wondering if maybe there is a difference in reading something written by the person who supposedly has this, had these experiences versus an outsider reporting on this, you know, someone who is a real author. Because these two books that I read in the past two months have both been written by the occupants of these ha haunted houses, right? And I both thought that they were so fucking boring. This one a little less so than the one I read last month, The People in the Attic, but it's just, it was very boring to me. Um, thankfully this was, you know, under 200 pages. It took me like six days to read. I just, it was really hard to build up the moxie to pick this up and sit down with it. Um, so yeah, I'll get into this more when I do the trip video about it. Okie dokie. The next book I'd like to tell you about is The Loop by Jeremy Robert Johnson. This was published last year. Oh my gosh, I always do this where I want to talk about the year these books were published and I freaking forget. But this one was published last year, 2020. And okay, there is this blurb that says, Stranger Things meets World War Z. And I feel like that the comparison to both those things doesn't quite hit the mark for me. I think Stranger Things was just very popular at the time and this book is about teens. So it's like, you know, Stranger Things and people going crazy. So it's like World War Z, but I don't necessarily think, you know, if you're reading that and you're like, that sounds like it's not for me then, I think that maybe you should ignore that comparison because oh, this book was very good. Uh, the narrator, let me look it up. Okay, the narrator for this was Inez del Castillo and I think she did such a great job um, on the narration of this book. She was able to put so much emotion into her narration and it made this book really great. And I'm wondering if, you know, because I've, I've seen a lot of polarizing things about this. So I'm wondering if possibly the reason why I love this so much was due to her narration. It's totally possible. Uh, this was on Scribd. So if you have a, if you haven't read this and you're curious about it and you have a Scribd um, account or alternatively, you can get 60 days free if you use uh, my referral code. And I promise this isn't just a promotion um, for Scribd, but that's where I found it. And I really loved her narration of this. This is about, oh my gosh, I haven't even told you what this book is about. What's, um, dang, I am so bad with names right now. This is about a teenager named Lucy and things start to go really fucking weird in the small town called Turner Falls that she lives in. Uh, it starts out with a student attacking another student and killing a teacher and it just gets worse from there. I don't really know what to tell you guys about this. Um, it's like it's a great like kind of science fictiony horror where um, people are doing things that they don't want to do and it's not their fault and so there's a lot of like conflicting emotion about how to take care of this and you know, there's like this government plot and all this stuff and it was just so action-packed. I really cannot believe that all that happened in this book is packed into like the 300 pages uh, that's in this book. Um, I thought it was really exciting and very creepy at times and I just cannot um, tell you enough how much I loved Inez del Castillo's narration of this. It was just so good and oh, so creepy. It was very creepy. All right, another book that I did a review about, so I'm just going to uh, give a brief synopsis and stuff about this, um, but also a link to the review if you wanna hear more about it. This is The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. This comes out in the US September 28th, if I'm remembering correctly. I believe it is the end of September. This is something I feel like I've never read before. The author 
has this really great clear voice and this is told in a couple different perspectives um this is about a man named tim right my god ted oh my god ted and um he lives with his daughter lauren and his cat olivia and there's a lot of conflict in their house ted has some issues lauren has some issues and then olivia is like just a cat uh but we do also get chapters where she is the narrator which i i know some people did not like that but i did it didn't feel i don't know like it did feel like a cat was talking to me but also it wasn't like annoying and weird about it and i liked that a lot i think those were some of my favorite chapters and there's another woman that we get a perspective from and her name is d and she's struggling with the decades old like loss of her younger sister and these all these people like come together and it really seamlessly flits back and forth between perspectives and it was just such a really compelling story and it felt emotionally taxing sometimes because of the characters but like in a good way in a way that i found compelling and in a way where i was like damn this author can fucking write you know what i mean so i would really recommend this not everyone's cup of tea i feel like this is another one that's a little bit polarizing i feel like e people either fucking love this book or do not do not and that's fine um i actually thought because of all the reviews that i'd heard raving about this that it was very possible i wouldn't like it but uh i did i like this a lot um so yeah watch my review if you care to go into that further then this fucking giant book the book of accidents by chuck wendig this was another new release and i've really really liked chuck wendig's books so far the ones that i've read i think this is the fourth book um and this one i don't know it's so hard because when when i finished this i rated it four stars i was like this is good um i liked it and i would recommend it but now thinking about it uh i read this at the very beginning of the month and i'm having a hard time now quantifying why i felt that way about it and it seems like as time has gone on i feel less strongly about it and more like this is just a book that I enjoyed at the time <laughs> but like I can't find any I can't really tell you why I felt that way about it when I finished it you know what I mean um this did have an interesting plot I guess so this is about um Nate and uh, Nate and Maddie right and they are a couple they are adults and they have a teenage son named Oliver something happens in their life um nate's father dies and leaves him the house that he grew up in in this small town and nate's really reluctant to take it because he has a terrible history with his dad his dad was abusive um just a terrible dude in general basically but it's like a really great opportunity for them who uh at this point are living in the city but in like an apartment and they're not financially doing super great um so they move and then these strange things start happening with their son Oliver and Oliver has always been kind of a special kid. He is very empathetic, um, almost to a fault. He just feels like so much feeling when he sees someone getting hurt uh, or something, even like ants getting squished, he, you know, feels so badly about it and uh, he's very sensitive so i don't know these bad things start happening i'm not even really sure what to tell you guys about this um the plot is a big plot and i feel like i could very easily give too much away so i'm just gonna tell you that bad things start happening in this little town it's things are very strange at first right and they get stranger and oliver meets a friend who is kind of leading him down maybe a not so good path I don't know that's it um so the plot was really big and interesting i guess but at the same time i feel like with the conclusion of it i don't know i don't know i feel very conflicted about this book now after it's been a couple weeks since i finished it i think that this is 
I, I won't say that this is a bad book, but I think that this is my least favorite of Chuck Wendig's books I've read so far. And that's okay. You know, sometimes that happens, but um, yeah, that's it. All right, last one here for today. This is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig, and this came out this year, I think just maybe in the beginning of August. I picked this up on a whim at Barnes and Noble, and then I started reading it kind of on a whim, and I'm so glad I did. Looking at this stack, this might be my, maybe my favorite book that I read this month. Um, man, where do I even get started with this? This is about a young woman named Ellery, and she lives in this secluded village, right? This village is surrounded by these woods, and everyone's told, like, these woods are very dangerous. And no one's like keeping people from going into the woods or through the woods. In fact, like they do have to send parties out for supplies um, to like some of the bigger communities outside of the woods. And so, you know, everyone knows that they have to do that, but it is treacherous in the woods. And on this latest supply run, everyone who went on this expedition is found slaughtered and they're finding these strange like woodland creatures like mutated stags and mutated wolves and all these weird creatures and they really just like don't know what to do and now they're cut off and things start going badly um you know the villagers kind of start to turn on each other i really think that this is um a great read alike for both the movie The Village and also for the book Needful Things. I think that this is a really great amalgamation of both of those stories. Um, it was interesting and compelling and it felt way shorter than the amount of pages here. I really liked the direction that the plot went. I don't want to give too much away, um, but it was fun. It was spooky and eerie and just watching like these people turn on each other. That's one of my very favorite themes or tropes in a book. When friends and family are not able to trust each other, it's just, uh, I don't know, she just did it so well. And uh, it's kind of like a, not, maybe not necessarily puritanical, but it feels like it is set around that time where i don't know you know where you know when the puritans would have been here sort of and i think sometimes when i'm reading a period piece can that does that term apply to books i don't know um when i'm reading something that's kind of a period piece right sometimes the language can be too heavy-handed but I think she did really well with incorporating maybe some of the language we would expect to find in this, but um, not doing it to the point where it's like cheesy or cartoonish. This, I don't know, I just really had a fun time with this book and um, uncovering, you know, the mystery of the creatures in the woods and all this stuff, you know, why people are turning on each other, why this supply party was murdered and it was just a really fun book. Uh, I liked this so much more than her previous book, House of Salt and Sorrows. And like, I, I liked that one okay, um, but I really, really enjoyed this one and I cannot wait to see what she does next. So that is what I ended up reading in August. Of course, let me know what you thought about these books that I have here. I'd love to hear, especially maybe if you have an opinion on the Book of Secrets or the Book of Accidents. Oh my gosh. Uh, but I would still love to hear you, your opinions on anything I read here. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in September. Goodbye.